Thank you for tuning in to my talk, Generalized Pruning Algorithm. This is a joint work with Eric Masson and Hassan Nassif. Uh, I would like to thank fellow Mania organizers for providing a great platform to present this research. This project was motivated by two questions. Can we marginalize over phylogenetic trees? And if so, what can we gain? As we all know, the total number of phylogenetic trees is super exponential in the number of taxa. So the focus of this project is, what if we truncate the space of trees in some smart and interesting way? Then can we marginalize over the trees? And what can we gain? The answer to the first question is yes, for a single site, and it is a topic of this presentation. The answer to the second question is still an ongoing research. We are conduct conducting experiments to show that we can combine single side marginals to perform approximate inference, and we are also exploring other possibilities. To truncate the tree space, we are going to use the idea of subsplits presented in 2018 NeurIFS paper by Zhang and Masson. The core idea is that we can build a tree in a top-down fashion by first choosing how to split all of the taxa, then recursively each child splits one of the two clades until there is nothing to split. So here we split taxa A from taxa B, C, D. The first split is referred to as root split. Then we split clade B, C, D, so the B splits off from C and D. And finally splitting off clade C, D. The subsplit value assigned to a node depends on the value of the subsplit taken by its parent. So we refer to these as parent-child subsplit pair. We can determine the support set of the trees by specifying conditional probability table for each parent-child subsplit pairs. Here I am using Greek letter phi to denote the probability of, of observing a PCSP which can be interpreted as conditional probability of observing a child subsplit given a parent subsplit, or the probability of observing a root split depending on the argument. We will call phi subsplit parameters. One thing I will stress is that the vertical bar here um, that's used inside phi is separating the clades, and they do not represent conditioning. Um, equipped with the conditional probability table, we can evaluate the probability of any tree by taking the product of the split parameters, uh, subsplit parameters, for each uh, PCSPs that appear in the tree. In this example, this tree has probability of 0.27 given by the probability of 0.3 for the root split and 0.9 for the subsplit of B from CD. We can in fact compute probability of any subtree as well as partially sub, uh, specified trees. So to illustrate, suppose we have this tree on six taxa. We can compute the probability of the subtree rooted that T. Uh, here T is a subsplit that uh, splits clade A, B, C, D. Um, and we express this as a conditional probability with the conditioning given by the value of subsplit T. So this tree here has, uh, the subtree has probability of 0.9. Here we have a partially specified tree where what happens below subsplit T is unspecified. So the, uh, the probability for this tree is 0.24 and is again given by the product of the subsplit parameters for the PCSPs that appear in this tree. So we have the loose split, which um, splits all of the taxa uh, into A, B, C, D splitting off from E, F, and this has probability of 0 0.8. And then we have a subsplit of a clade A, B, C, D, and that has probability of 0 0.3, uh, giving us 0 0.24 for the probability. Now I'm going to revisit this question of why this truncation is smart and interesting. And I will point to a figure from Zhang and Masson in their follow-up paper published in 2019. So in that paper, 
they use the subsequent representation to parameterize variation or, variation or approximation to a true posterior distribution. They do a 10 billion iteration golden one using Mr. Base to use as a ground truth posterior over the trees. So this plot shows a KL divergence between variation or approximation and ground truths using BIMCO and RWS, which are two methods for fitting the variational distribution. As a comparison, they ran MCMC for 2 million iterations with 4 chains and 10 runs. And as can be seen from the figure, the KL divergence is much lower for variation or approximation compared to MCMC, meaning that these approximations parameterized by subsplits do a sufficient job of capturing the trees uh, that have high probability in the posterior dis distribution. The plot demonstrates that subsplits are useful building blocks for modeling trees, allowing parameter sharing across different trees. Um, and for ex uh, one of our exam experiments uh, with uh, the Ebola virus data on 1,570 sequences had 42,300 and four PCSPs, and it spanned over 10 to the power of 241 trees. So this goes to show that these PCSPs uh, work in a combinatorial fashion and can sp uh, indeed span a large number of trees. Now I will talk about our generalized pruning algorithm. Um, before I begin, I will start with a brief overview. So this variational inference based approach proposed in Zhang and Masson, uh, it works well, but it involves uh, sampling trees. So it could get slow, um, depending on the, the problem, especially as uh, so the number of taxa um, is large. So we wanted an algorithm that's specialized for phylogenetics, um, which led us to consider marginalization of the topologies. And we also wanted the algorithm to be fast, so that we can say quickly estimate the branch length parameters, and then using the results of that optimization uh, in estimating the subsplit parameters. So our GP algorithm aims to optimize branch lengths for each PCSP in O1 time by using the messages computed uh, during traverses up and down um, this um, graph that I'm going to define in a moment. And um, then we're going to fix the branch lengths and estimate the subsplit parameters. Uh, these expressions in this slide, um, I'm going to give more details in the following slides. So for now, uh, I'm not going to talk about this in detail. But this figure essentially uh, depicts what I just described. So we want a message. Uh, there's message R, which is coming um, down the tree and message P that's coming going up the tree and this lets us evaluate the likelihood um, um, for a given branch length parameter theta and that is crucial for um, uh, optimizing the branch lengths say using gradient descent or even uh, gradient free methods like branch optimization method. So suppose we're given these three, three, three trees from God as the only trees that have non-zero probability for a given sequence data on four taxa. And we're going to combine these trees and form a graph with subsplit, subsplits as nodes. And GP algorithm basically is uh, performing two-pass dynamic programming on this subsplit graph. So here is uh, the uh, Order subsplit graph. So, so these are so it's, it's a subsplit graph, but we added the term ordered to indicate that the subsplits are always ordered, uh, yeah, using lexicographical ordering. And so here we have subsplit uh, S, which is denoted as tuple of clade S1 and S2. Um, so here S1 comes before S2 by lexicographical order. And we have this notion of rotating a subsplit and Rotating a subsplit just means we're going to flip the, the clade. So if you rotate S, then we're going to get um, a tuple where S2 comes before S1. So there are two types of edges uh, in this graph, sorted edges in, uh, represented in solid lines and rotated edges uh, in dashed lines. So in the figure, you can think of the sorted edge as connecting 
a parent subsplit to a child subsplit, um, so, such that the child's child splits the plate on the left of the vertical bar, and the rotated edges that's connecting parent subsplit to a child that subsplits the plate on the right side um, of the vertical bar, or more complicated way to think about this is uh, rotated edges connect a parent subsplit to a child subsplit that um, splits the left side of the vertical bar after you rotate the parent subsplit. Uh, but let's not think about it, uh, the complicated version. Let's just say we have two types of edges, uh, sorted and rotated. And sorted uh, basically connects two subsplits parent and child, where child subsplits the clade on the left side, and the rotated edges um, connect the parent and child, where child subsplits the uh, clade on the right side of the vertical bar. So note that this graph encapsulates all three trees that we started with, um, here highlight, highlighted in bold. Um, so I'm just going to show this to, uh, as an illustration of how this whole subsplit graph um, spans all the trees that, that we are given. Okay, so now I'm going to briefly discuss uh, Felsenstein pruning algorithm. Uh, this algorithm does not need a review, but um, I, I will just touch up on it briefly so that uh, I can introduce some notations along the way. So, um, so note, uh, recall that Felsenstein pruning algorithm is a dynamic programming algorithm that computes likelihood by marginalizing out the unobserved sequences at the internal nodes for a given tree. And it does this by associating likelihood table with each node of the tree and filling out this table in a bottom-up fashion from leaf to root. And the result of these computations, sometimes referred to as messages, get propagated up to the root using transition matrix denoted in boldface capital P, which allows us to compute the likelihood over all observed sequences for a given tree with internal states marginalized. So a recent paper by G et al. refers to this boldface small letter P as partial likelihood vector um, associated with post-order traversal of the tree, where post-order traversal ensures that child node is visited before parent. And they express the Felsenstein recursion using this clean and concise matrix notation as shown here. And we, we are going to adopt this notation, but we're going to provide a different recursion uh, definition catered to our case uh, for subsplit graph. So here is a root word uh, or post server recursion. So our definition of the partial likelihood vector for subsplit T sums over the substrees rooted at T and the sum end is the likelihood over tree tau weighted by the probability of tree as evaluated using subspeed parameters phi. We show that this can be written in terms of the PLBs of the children subsplit. So recall here that tilde represents rotated subsplit and we say s is less than t if s is a child subsplit of t. So we have the P of T, um, the partial likelihood vector for subsplit T written as in terms of um, partial likelihood vectors for children S1 and S2. To show that this result holds, we simply replace the definition of the PLV for the children subsplits um, S1 and S2. And we end up with the likelihood below as defined in the um, previous slide here, and we also end up with the, um, the probability of a tree rooted at t. So here you can see that we benefit greatly from computing the tree probabilities dynamically using subsplit. Note that if we have a single tree, then phi is an indicator function and this recursion uh, collapses to Felsenstein pruning recursion, hence the name generalized pruning algorithm. So by summing over the root splits, we can compute the exact marginal likelihood for a single site M. The, 
The bold face pi here denotes the stationary distribution. And expanding on the definition of the PLB for S, we get this nice expression for probability of a subtree tau with, with S, S as the loose split, multiplied by loose split probability for S. And that gives us the probability of a tree tau. And we also get this vector product of stationary distribution with the likelihood of observed sequences below S, represented by uh, bold phase small p tau s, and this yields the likelihood of the observed sequences over all taxa. And this concludes the post order or root word pass of the generalized pruning algorithm. Now I'm going to briefly describe the, um, the pre uh, order pass of version of um, the, the two pass algorithm. So to that end, we need a notion of likelihood of the observed sequences uh, above a node. And we again adopt the notation used in C et al. Um, recall that pre-order traversal ensures that a parent node is visited before its children. So we're going to uh, associate a PLB, we call it RPLB, to each node of a tree. And we will compute them using uh, during a pre-order traversal. These pre-order PLBs store a joint probability of the observed sequences above V and the value of the sequence at node V. But we're going to modify this definition for our purpose. Um, instead of the value of the sequence at V, we will use the value of its parent, X, to define the joint distribution represented by our RPLB. <laughs> and also, we do not call these pre-order PLBs because the pre-order traversal on DAGs do not guarantee that a parent node is visited before a child. We're going to work with reverse subsplit graph where we flip the direction of the edges and then perform post-order traversal on this reverse subsplit graph. So we will call these reverse post-order PLBs. So in this diagram here, we have a parent subsplit T and a child subsplit S. And S is given by two clades S1 and S2. And this um, notation for um, notation tau subscript root of S is set of trees um, that is partially specified on X minus S2, where X denotes the set of all taxa. So our leaf for recursion on S is defined on this uh, partially unspecified trees. So the sum end in the leaf for recursion represents the joint likelihood of the observed sequences of of S with the value of the sequence at the parent subsplit T. We it by the partially specified topologies on S. And again, um, I stress here that we're using this dynamic, dynamic nature of um, subsplit uh, towards calculating the tree probability. Note that R is not invariant to each argument. The definition of R S differs from R tilde S. So here um, we show that an R PLB can be expressed in terms of RPLB of the parent subsplits and PPLBs of the children subsplits. And depending on the argument, we're going to be using uh, children subsplits either from the splits S1, the clade S1, or clade S2. So here we depict this message coming in from the parent subsplits T into S in this blue arrow coming down from T to S. And the message from child subsplits W that uh, comes up to S. And this is a definition of Rs. Then these messages get combined, the summation first, and then product, um, and to be passed down to the child children subsplits U that splits the clade S1. And when we compute R over T with version of S, we are still using the same R PLBs from the parent subsplits of S, but the P PLB from the children uh, are coming from the children subsplits U that split clade S1 and these messages get propagated 
combine them get, then get propagated down to um, children subsplits W that subsplits uh, clade S2. Um, and this is the our uh, result um, summarized in, in the equations. Um, note that when uh, the S is a loose split, we have a special definition uh, given in terms of the stationary distribution. So essentially what this means is that we perform two paths over the subsplit graph. First pass towards the loose split to compute the post-order PLVs, the, the P PLVs, and the leaf forward pass to compute the reverse post-order PLVs or R PLVs. So now we are back to this slide that I showed earlier. So we can compute per PCSP exact marginal likelihood for each site, where we marginalize over the trees that contain PCSP um, T to S. Then we combine this uh, per, per PCSP marginal for each site to form a composite likelihood function and use it as an objective function to estimate the branch length. We can evaluate the composite likelihood in ON for each branch, branch length, which is fast enough to be used with a gradient-free method. I have not included this, uh, it as a part of this talk, but we can also compute gradients using the PLVs, which means that we can use gradient-based methods method to optimize the branch length. We have devised a scheduling algorithm where we visit the nodes recursively in a depth first expansion. This lets us visit a branch to optimize and to propagate the results up and down the tree so that fresh values are available for the next branch to be optimized. And this optimization step is pretty fast. For our experiment involving 1500 sequences, it converged in less than an hour where convergence is measured by the change in the composite marginal likelihood. We can now fix the branch length and estimate the subsplit probabilities conditioned on the observed data. We take a Bayesian approach where we initialize the subsplit parameters such that they define uniform distribution over the topologies. Then we can use the per PCSP composite likelihood in place of the exact marginal likelihood to update the subsplit parameters. Note that this approach of fixing the branch length and then exploring the topologies has been shown to be effective in Widen et al. And we are adopting a similar strategy here. We fix the branch length and then we estimate the uncertainty in the trees via subsplit parameters. I will point out that ignoring this dependence between the sites may be concerning. But note that composite likelihood methods do have some asymptotic guarantees. So perhaps in the cases where we have large number of sites, this could yield accurate estimates. But I do admit that use of composite likelihood is subject to further experimental validation. We have tried this idea out on DS7 dataset uh, and found that subsplit probability estimates compare favorably to the results obtained using the method proposed in Zhang and Masson in the New Lips paper in 2018. The y-axis here is the estimate of the subsplit parameters obtained using the procedure that I just described using generalized pruning algorithm. And the x-axis is an estimate obtained using simple average method proposed in Zhang and Masson. And we can see that the two estimates exhibit a linear pattern So to conclude, I will mention some of the research directions that we're exploring. First, as we are performing branch lab optimization over a graph, we need to determine a suitable schedule in which to visit the branches. Although I have presented one such schedule, we are still looking into uh, ways to make it better. Um, so this is similar problem to how message passing over a graph with a cycle, say a factor graph with a cycle, needs a good scheduling, scheduling algorithm to perform well and to converge. A one weak spot of this approach um, is that we need a collection of trees or PCSPs provided as an input. 
Right now, we are using fast bootstrap methods to generate initial set of trees to extract the PCSP support form. The advantage of GP2 path algorithm is that it's fast and quick and can quickly compute the composite likelihood over each PCSP. So we're looking into ways to use this to our advantage to expand and explore subsplit supports. We will still require a small set of support we provided, but we can quickly expand the PCSP support to include interesting trees using the GP algorithm. And on a related note, perhaps this can be useful for performing online phylogenetic inference. When a new sequence data comes in, instead of performing inference from scratch, we can figure out an optimal locations for this new sequence to be attached in the subsplit graph. Then we can perform local updates to fit well, to, to fit the branch length parameters, but also the subsplit, subsplit parameters. And this application could have quite a bit of impact in studying fast evolving viruses. For example, SARS-CoV-19. And finally, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we are looking into va uh, validating composite likelihood um, as an objective function. And we are trying to understand um, some of its uh, properties. So that's all for my talk. Thank you for listening.